Hi folks, Torpedo Heat here. Today we're going to show you how to clean out the injector nozzle on a 210,000 BTU Mr. Heater Heat Star. It's a product by Enerco. We have to remove this shield. This is called a radiation shield. It keeps the radiation of the light from coming back into this chamber. It also blocks airflow, but the proper name for this shield is the radiation shield. So to remove this shield that the nozzle mounts to, we're going to have to disconnect our spark plug there. And we're going to have to disconnect our spark plug here because it's mounted to the bracket. You can see this plug is old and rusty and it might break, but that's okay if it does. We have a new one. Okay, that's disconnected. Over here, this is your fuel line. You have to take that off. Remove your lines. Pull this up around. It's a little bit easier for you. That nozzle can rotate and get your air line off of there. As you can see, these lines are on there tight. And that is very important in the operation of a torpedo heater. <coughs> Okay, so we got our lines off, we got our spark plug leads off, we're going to move the motor back as far as it can go, which is about that far, which just gives us a little extra room to work with. Take a ratchet, nut driver, whatever you have, there's four bolts in here, four screws, they're supposed to be anyway, I don't know how many is actually in this. I do see two. That's one. That's two. We have another one down in here. They tuck them down in here tight and it is kind of difficult to put them together. It's easier to take them apart. So, we're going to get this one out of here. Okay, that, that's three. And all the screws are in this one. So, we do have one more to take out, which is right down here in this hole and all these screws are go right through this radiation shield okay so we have our radiation shield taken off okay Here's the nozzle, right here. As you can see, it's pretty black, and it's been burnt, looks like. And there's your spark plug that sticks in front of the nozzle. And uh, that's basically how it works. So we're going to start by removing the spark plug, get it out of the way because it's kind of fragile. So we just take. And loosen this screw, hopefully. And remove your spark plug from the radiation shield. Spark plug sits right in there like that. Okay. Now, the nozzle is held on by a C-clip. We're not going to remove the nozzle from the shield. We're just going to take it apart just like it is. Save a little bit of time. So, we got our ratchets. Because these things can be tight sometimes. Sometimes they're not. Put a socket on the back side of it, socket on the front side of it, and do what you got to do to get it 
uh, the face of it to come loose. If you sometime you have to lay it down on the edge of something like that. Ah, this one's really, really tight. Wow. Probably never been serviced before. You saw how tight it was. Okay, so we take the tip of that nozzle on out of there. Unscrew it out, and that's the nozzle right there. And that's the part that we're going to clean up. It doesn't look too bad. Let's see what we got when we get down inside there. Down inside this housing doesn't look too bad either. If you can see that. Looks fairly clean. So, let's get this nozzle apart. And see what's in there, if anything. We're rebuilding this heater. And we're going over the whole thing. Okay, so, this nozzle's in two pieces, three, the stem, the nozzle, and the head. So we're going to take it apart for you, lay it all out, show you what's in there. Hold the head of it, put some pliers around the stem, loosen that. Should come loose by hand. There's a very little small piece on the inside of there that you do not want to lose. Do not let it roll away. There it is right there. Okay. You also see something else came out of that hole with that. That was a restriction in the fuel line. You see that? You see that? That was our problem with this whole heater right here. See that? There's something that's sticking. Wow. It's actually sticking from the inside of the tip of the nozzle. Look at that. Wow. Your heater cannot, absolutely cannot run like that. That was the whole problem right there, blocking the fuel. Okay. So, you see that blob hanging there. We're going to take a brand new container. We're going to put that in there. We're going to take and put the stem in there and put the head in there. Pour some 91% alcohol, and we're going to close him up and shake him around a little bit and see if we can get some of that stuff started to clean up. Okay, wow. Look at all that stuff that we got out of the inside of that nozzle. Okay, that's... that's that's impossible for a heater to run with the nozzle stopped up like that. So, first off, I'm going to take a Q-tip, dip it in some of our alcohol, and run it down this hole up to the end as far as it will go. It won't come through because the other end is a different size. Okay, we clean that nozzle out right there, the inside of that nozzle out there with a Q-tip, and that's nice and clean. These threads here going around here those are the threads that screw into the head of the nozzle those threads must be clean see those are the threads that hold it together those threads must be clean on this stem and inside of the head so you take your q-tip again stick it down in there squish it around the nozzle doesn't look too bad but we did bring out a few little pieces of pieces of stuff. Run them around, run them around your threads, and make sure that the hole inside of this piece is nice and clean, which it is pretty much. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, now this piece is so stubborn that that blockage is still there. The alcohol didn't take it out of there. So we're going to see if we can pull it out with our fingers. Wow, that's really stopped up. Whatever that is. I'm going to have to just blow it through it a little bit once I dry the alcohol off of it. Just blow it through it from the opposite direction. Okay. There. 
Now, to, I'm trying to look through the hole there and see, and it does look, it does look clear. Okay, so now that's clear. We're going to rinse it off again in the alcohol just to make sure that there's no residue in there. Okay, this little bitty piece, you won't be able to see it, but it has areas wherein the air goes across it in the outside around those spirals. If you can see the spirals, and at the very tip in the center, right there in the center, is where the fuel comes out at. So the air shoots across these outer tips here in a spiral and draws the fuel out of that center hole. So we're going to blow through this one more time. And it seems to be clear. Now, whenever you're rebuilding a nozzle, there are certain components that really don't like to be removed. Whether it be an O-ring or a rubber gasket, it should be replaced. So when you're rebuilding your nozzle, this one just happens to have an O-ring. Some of them do have a rubber gasket. A nozzle rebuild, O-ring, part number 31351. That is a universal part. That part fits all nozzles on the market, on the rear of torpedo heaters, up to 215,000 BTU, I'm sorry. Those heaters that have a spring washer gasket kit use this part here, M8882. That's a little bitty rubber washer that fits on the back of a different setup that we can show you at a later date. That's just a little bitty washer there, gasket, rubber gasket. That seals up your nozzle. Okay, this heater doesn't use this one, but that's the part <coughs> that you would put on the other heater. Okay, so this heater needs one of these little bitty gas uh, washer gaskets here, O-rings, and we're going to pull one out of here, these little bitty fellas. These are not sold in any automotive parts store, so... Um, as I said, they are a universal part, but it's, it is a specialty part. Okay, so we're going to try to get this old ring off of here. They can be difficult sometimes. Once you remove an old ring, it's always best to replace it. Once you take it out of its setting, it's always best to replace it. And these are down in these holes in these things, so they can be kind of difficult to remove. Let me see if I got my... Uh, got my pick and I'm gonna see if I can't pick under that and remove that o-ring off of there that o-ring come from right around that lip right there okay so we'll set that o-ring on the side now we take your threads that are clean that we know go up into the head of the nozzle we put that little bitty piece that was stopped up set on there like that okay then once again you take and stick that up into the nozzle head to keep it from falling off of there okay and then you run the head down on it that way you can't drop it and it can't fall off the head in there okay that's in there that's in there, and if you can see, right in the center, right in the center of that, inside there, in that center, is that little bitty tip that we just installed on the tip of that, s that stem, on the inside there. Okay, so the outside looking bad here, really not that big of an issue. Okay, we're going to put our O-ring, our new O-ring, on the rear end. Snap that on there, and the new O-ring fits nicely into the new, into the groove of the uh, newly cleaned nozzle. Okay, now you have the rest of the nozzle housing.
that's still mounted to the radiation shield. Get your Q-tip, stick it down in there. You just want to check and make sure everything's clean. Q-tip looks clean and come out clean. Rotate it a little bit to where you stick the Q-tip down through these holes. Coming out clean. So this is fairly clean. Okay, this is the inlet for this nozzle holder. Okay, so everything here is fairly clean. Didn't get too much dirt out of there. And I'm just going to blow through it. Just to get anything else out of there that may be little crispy critters. Then you take your nozzle, stick it back down in there, tighten them down, tightening the nozzle stem to this part is not very important because it seals up from the rear. Okay, so once you put it in there hand tight, that is good. Okay, so we got our nozzle rebuilt. We straighten everything out. These are easily to bend. We will put back our spark plug, which doesn't, again, look real good. Okay, but it is a spark plug. This spark plug is missing a washer on there, but that shouldn't hurt it from running. So we put our spark plug back on there, old rusty spark plug, old rusty heater, trying to bring some life back to it. Okay, we got our spark plug back in there. Our radiation shield looks fairly good in position. See where that spark plug sits in, in relation to that nozzle? Okay, the electrodes on this spark plug are just about close to where it's shooting out, it's spraying out, and the spray will hit the tip of that spark plug, okay? Because it, it, it sprays in a, a V pattern. So the spark plug, we're just going to take and hit it with a piece of sandpaper, clean it up some, get some of that ash off of there, some of that smoke. They've been running diesel fuel through this heater, I can tell. And so what goes on here is you're actually spraying a mixture of diesel fuel and air across this spark plug constantly, just like in a car. But if you were using kerosene, it would run a little bit cleaner, and you wouldn't have quite so much of this corrosion, um, especially after leaving it set still, leaving the heater set for any length of time. So... We got that cleaned up pretty nice. You just need to clean them up. That doesn't need to look brand new. Just make yourself a good contact there. Clean the tips of it. That's where the spark is. So, then you take and you reinstall this assembly just like we took it out. Screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here. You reinstall your two air lines, your air line up in the front, your fuel line in the rear, and you reinstall your wires on your spark plug that's not as rusty as this one. And that's how you clean the nozzle on a 210,000 BTU Heat Star Interco product torpedo heater. Um, if there's any questions as to needing parts, where I got these parts, these are specialty parts. I did get them from torpedoheat.com. And if there's any more issues that you have with your torpedo heater that you need me to make a video on, uh, feel free to leave a comment or contact me, and I, I will tell you how to fix it and get it done right the first time. So, anyway, folks, thanks for watching, and once again, have a great day.